Welcome to Driven Dog Chat. My name is Mel, and this channel is where I will be uploading future podcasts. This essentially is my episode one. It'll be a while before additional podcasts get dropped as I plan to record several of them and have them ready to go before I officially drop the first one. But I wanted to take the time to introduce myself and talk about how I ended up here. As the name implies, this is going to be dog-related content. So my breed is the Border Collie. I actively train and compete in agility and sheep herding with my dogs. I have four Border Collies currently in my home, and we have a token Aussie that belongs to my husband. And I got my first Border Collie shadow in 2006. She did not come from an ethical breeder. I would say it was a backyard breeder, but I still adored her to bits. She was a pretty awesome dog. I got pretty lucky with her. And when I got her, I didn't get her because I wanted to do all the dog things. But after I brought her home, I thought, oh, this is a border collie. I probably should do something with this dog. And at four months old, we were enrolled in competition obedience classes. And we continued those for the next few years. When she was 16 months old, I had the opportunity to get a sheep herding lesson with her. And that was absolutely amazing. She had never seen livestock a day in her life and had no formal training on livestock herding at all. The trainer took her in. She crouched. She slouched. She stalked up on the sheep, gathered them up, put them in the corner, and just lied down. I was hooked. That's all it took. This dog had no training. This was all instinctual, and she did all of that naturally. She really was an amazing dog. So... We continued with sheep herding training after that. And the following summer, I brought home a second border collie. That was when Skye came into my life. And when Skye was two and Shadow was four, 2010, we dove into agility. My first training wasn't with a really good trainer, but after we started competing, I secured a much better trainer where I could learn better handling skills from, and both Shadow and Sky had a lovely career in agility. We've had so much fun over the years. And then when Sky was nine years old, I ended up breeding him and taking a puppy out of the litter. Now, technically, I did not own the dam, but I was very, very involved in all aspects of this litter, raising the puppies, doing puppy culture, ENS, making all the plans, securing homes, all of that. I was very involved. And they also happened to be really close to me. So I was there pretty much every day with those puppies, spending hours on end with them. And that's how I ended up with my drizzle. A couple years later, the owner of the dam decided they wanted to repeat the breeding. And while I didn't originally plan to take a puppy out of that litter, this time a red girl came out. And I am a sucker for a red border collie, and I knew I was going to take her. And I was just really lucky that my husband didn't file for divorce after I brought her home. But I was thrilled to have her. And my goals were that either drizzle or spin would potentially produce my next puppy for me. I anticipated them to be the foundations of my lines. But when Spin was about seven months old, a puppy out of Drizzle's litter, so full sibling, but not from the same litter as Spin, ended up being diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. And that is devastating in this breed. There's no genetic test for it. If you cannot find any other causes for the seizures, you have to assume that it's genetic, meaning that it is inheritable. And so that kind of washed my plans for breeding either drizzle or spin down the drain. And I ended up spaying them knowing that I was not going to be able to get a puppy out of them. And it broke my heart because they were out of my boy who is an amazing dog. And then a couple years later, I decided it was time to bring home the next Border Collie puppy. 
and that maybe she would be the dog that I could get my next puppy out of and maybe she could be the foundation of my program. And that's how I ended up with Sequel. She comes from a lovely working breeder. I flew from Michigan to Las Vegas to bring her home and I have been absolutely thrilled with her. Absolutely thrilled. So in 2020, I think it was around August, my friend kept showing me all these TikToks and said, you got to check these out. You need to get this app. I'm like, no, I don't need the app. I finally downloaded it, got a little hooked on it, uploaded some baby kitty videos and some of my dog videos. Nothing too extravagant. I think I had like 60 followers. And then in December, I posted a video that featured my agility field. Because about five and a half years ago, my husband and I uprooted ourselves from suburbia and moved out into the country, purchased a little six-acre farm so that I would eventually be able to have sheep of my own to train for sheep herding. And I had space to set up an agility field. So I basically have a competition agility field out back. And when I put that on camera, all of a sudden, that video blew up and I had people asking me questions. And that's how I started making videos on TikTok and actually putting myself out there. And I loved it. I love helping people. And eventually, the conversations gravitated over to breeders, finding a good breeder, ethical breeders, how to tell the difference between them and backyard breeders. And at this point, most of my TikToks revolve around exactly that, ethical breeding practices and why it's important to work with an ethical breeder that proves their dogs in some way. And about six months in, I had a lot of people asking me, you should do a podcast. Do you have a YouTube channel? You should do a podcast. And I was like, no, because I really liked the format on TikTok. One in three minute videos, I can reply to comments. Um, I don't have a ton of preparation. I don't need a lot of equipment and I can get the message out there. So I declined, you know, I was like, you know, it sounds great, but it also sounds like a lot of work and I don't know if I'm up for that. And I don't know if I want to take on that much because it's a lot, right? Well, then another year or so later, turns out that some of the backyard breeders who I was coming across on TikTok, they really didn't like my content. They were big mad that I was educating people on ethical breeding practices. For the record, I am not the only creator on TikTok who does this. There are actually a lot of friends that I'm mutuals with there who do the exact same type of content. But for some reason, they really wanted to see me go down. They wanted to silence me. And so my first original account was sitting at about 30,000 followers and it got banned. And it was banned for nothing related to my content. It was banned for adult content, which none of my content contained. And of course, I reached out to TikTok asking about this and stating to them, hey, this is a false report. This is not in there. And they didn't do anything about it. So there I was with a banned account and I couldn't do anything. So I started a new one. And within 48 hours, my followers got me over a thousand so we could go live again because I really enjoy hanging out with my followers on live feeds. And um, I've just been steadily growing ever since. But then even on my new account, all of a sudden, I got a live feed banned. Somebody reported me for something that was, again, a false report because they wanted to silence me. And it was at that point that I realized that the information that I share about ethical breeding practices and some other aspects related to dogs is really good and important information. And somebody wants to silence me because they don't want that information out there, which to me says you're a backyard breeder And you don't want me telling your potential future puppy buyers not to come buy from you based on the education that I'm putting out there. And so when that first live got banned on my new account, that was when I decided that I was going to pursue a podcast. 
unfortunately, it takes me a long time to get my ducks in a row and I'm a little nitpicky about things. So this has been a slow going process, but I'm getting there. I'm working on it. And all I can say is that I can't stop. I won't stop and I will not be silenced. So I am making sure that I have another platform here that I can share my information on in the form of a podcast. So a lot of people who are already here are my followers from TikTok. And I have not officially published this channel yet on TikTok, but I'm going to do it after I upload this video. And additional podcasts are forthcoming. It'll probably be spring before I get them to the point where I'm ready to start uploading. But they are in the works. And I'm really excited about it. And I'm a little nervous about it. It's going to be a learning curve trying to figure out how all this works, editing the videos, just all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I got some equipment, right? I got a microphone. I got a nice webcam. And that works. I thought I could do it with my phone at first, but I was like, I, I don't like the quality. I can't do this. And so in came the webcam and the microphone. So this is a journey. I'm sure I'll make mistakes, but I'm trying to get it all figured out. I have a logo and everything that's already been designed by a good friend of mine, and that's already up here on the page. I need to put some shorts up from time to time and keep the flow going, but the actual really meat and bones of the podcast is going to be coming along in a few months. So, but if you're here for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy the dog content. And if you're over here from TikTok because you follow me over there, welcome to you too. And I am so happy to have you here. And as soon as we can get me to enough following, I'll probably start doing live feeds here because TikTok is a problem. It's not very well supervised, right? They are quick to ban and not reinstate even for false reporting. And that's why I'm here because I want to make sure that I have some place I can still share the things that I do. So how did I come to know all the things that I do about ethical breeding? Well, that would be my predecessors before me, the ethical breeders before me, who are the ones who have created and laid down the guidelines for ethical breeding practices. I have rubbed elbows with tons of breeders of all different breeds, been in in-depth conversations and mentored with breeders. I have learned so much from these people. And I actually have a lot of ethical breeding friends on TikTok who also make content like I do. I will share my TikTok account here if anybody wants to go follow me there because even though I'm starting a podcast here, I will still maintain my TikTok. I also host in the summertime an event here at my farm called Dog Talk Palooza. That came about in the summer of 2021 when a bunch of us got together on TikTok and decided, hey, we want to meet in real life. And we did. And that very first year, I had 60 people and 100 dogs that spent the weekend on my property in tents and campers. And then we did it again this year. And this year, I had 80 people and 100 dogs in tents and campers on my property. And 2023 is in the works. I have a lot of lovely people who have volunteered to do committee heads and so forth so that I don't have to handle it all by myself. And they helped a lot this year, and that went really, really well. So I'm really looking forward to doing it again next year. So I think that's it. Feel free to ask questions. I'm not opposed to putting up other shorter videos to answer any questions you might have. But I'm really glad to have you here, and I'm looking forward to doing more of this driven dog chat here we go